there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and we're going to look at the second video on differentiation. This is based around core maths and is applicable to most other maths modules. Okay, so um, before we crack on and look at the equation of a normal, I'm just going to do some more complex derivatives um, or slightly more difficult ones. Um, so suppose we have a function y equals 4 minus 1 over x and we're asked to find dy dx. Um, how might we find a derivative here? Well, um, the, the law that we learned in the previous video is not particularly suitable to tackle this type of problem, but we can change this function, uh, change the look of it at, at least anyway, so that our previous rule is useful. So I'm not going to do anything with the 4, I'm going to leave it alone. But instead, in, instead of having 1 over x, I can write that as x to the power of negative 1. So I can write it in index form, and now we can write dy by dx equals, and using the same rules as we have in the previous video, the derivative of a constant is always zero. And now I'm going to take the power down in front, multiply by the coefficient of x, so negative one times negative one is positive one. And I'm going to reduce that power by one, so one x to the power of negative two. In other words, it's one over x squared. Okay, same thing again here. Second example, um, I've got 6 over the fourth root of x. Um, so I'm going to write that as y equals 6 over, and instead of writing it with this um, fourth root symbol, I'm going to write it as x to the power of 1 quarter. x to the power of a quarter. And 6 over x to the power of a quarter is the same as 6 times by um, 1 over x to the power of a quarter, which is actually just the same as 6 times x to the power of negative a quarter, 1 quarter like so, which equals 6x to the negative 1 quarter. Well, I've drawn that out a little bit longer than I would normally, but just want to be clear about what's going on. That's the same as um, 6 times 1 over x to the quarter and then we use one of the index laws to um, to take this x up above the line and we change the symbol to a negative power which is 6x to the power of negative a quarter. Okay, so now let's take the derivative. So dy by dx we take the power down in front multiply by the coefficient of x. So it's negative 1 quarter times by 6 which is negative 6 over 4, we can cancel that down in a moment, x and reduce this power by 1 to the negative 5 over 4. So that's going to equal, let's just tidy up a wee bit, negative 3 over 2, x to the power of negative 5 over 4, and if you want you could write it as negative 3 over 2x to the 5 over 4, if you wish. Okay, let's move on. So I need to find dy dx here. I actually should have a y equals here. So we're going to do a similar thing. I'm going to write it in index form, getting rid of these um, third uh, symbols or the square root sign here in this case. So I'm going to write it as y equals 8x to the power of 1 half plus, and this is the same as 4 over 3, 4 over 3 times 1 over x squared. So 8x to the half plus 4 over 3, well 1 over x to the half can be written as x to the negative 2. So we're using uh, one of the index laws again, if you remember a to the negative n equals 1 over a to the n. So I'm bringing the power up um, and changing the sign. So we get 8 x to the power of a half plus 4 over 3 
x to the negative 2. Okay, let's use our power law. So for derivatives, so dy by dx would equal power multiplied by coefficient of x is going to give me 4. Reduce that power by 1, negative 1 half. And a similar thing here, the power multiplied by the coefficient of x, so negative 2 times 4 over 3 is negative 8 over 3, x to the power, and reduce this by 1. Now, we can leave our answer like that. I'm happy to leave our answer like that, but we could also write it like this. This would be the same as 4 over x to the power of a half. Now be careful, this negative a half is only acting on the x. It does not act on the 4 as well. Uh, subtract, and again, the negative uh, 3 power here is only acting on the x. So we can write this as 8 over the x will come below the line, so 8 over 3, 3 x cubed, 3 x cubed, like so. On we go. Um, final one of this type, so I need to find dy dx when we're given something like this. And you may remember, if I have, say, uh, 2 plus 5 over, 7 is not a good choice, 2 plus 5 over 9, suppose I had something like that, well that's the same as 2 over 9 plus 5 over 9. So that's what I'm, I'm going to apply that idea to this. So let's write um, the y equals, and it's going to be 8x over 4 root x plus x cubed over 4 root x. Now I just want to point out some danger here. You are not allowed to do this. The 4 cancels with the 8 to give us 2. Be very, very careful of that. You are not allowed to do that. It's not mathematically correct. It does not work. There's a number, there's a reason Fairly, you, can, you can prove it fairly straightforward using numbers. I'll leave that down to you. Just do not do it. Um, it's highly illegal. Okay, um, now I can cancel the 4 into the 8 here. And that will give me 2x on top. And I'm going to write the x underneath, uh, the square root of x, as x to the power of a half. And I'm adding to that... Um, the top is going to stay alone here, x cubed, and I'm going to write that as 4x to the power of a half. Okay, now I'm going to use the index laws again. Um, if I've got x to the power of 1 divided by x to the power of a half, we subtract the powers, and that will give me just simply x to the power of a half. And over here, I'm going to write this as 1 quarter and then uh, using the power, the index laws again, so x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of a half, subtracting the powers, that gives me x to the power of uh, 3 subtract a half, which is 2 and a half, which is 5 over 2. Okay. Now let's use our index or our derivative. So take the derivative dy by dx will equal a half times 2 is 1 and then drop that power by a half so x to the power of negative 1 half and then 5 over 2 times a quarter so 5 halves times a quarter is going to give us 5 over 8 and then reduce that power by 1 which will give me x to the 3 over 2 so x to the power of negative 1 half plus 5 eighths x to the power of 3 over 2. So that's just some more complicated um, derivatives, slightly more difficult. And these are more likely to come up in the exam. Alright, so let's crack on with the equation of the normal. So in the last um, video we talked about the equation of the tangent to the curve. So the equation of the tangent to the curve would... Well, the tangent to the curve is a straight line that touches the curve at one point 
only, uh, in this case it's right here, well the normal, the normal to the curve at that point would be perpendicular, yes, perpendicular to the tangent or something like that. So the equation of the normal is perpendicular to the equation of the tangent. And because they're perpendicular and they form a right angle, that means that the gradient, so the gradient m1 times, well, if this had a gradient m1 and this had gradient m2, the product of those gradients, m1 times m2, equals negative 1. So from our coordinate geometry of the line, we should remember this, that when we multiply two gradients uh, of a line that are perpendicular, the result is negative 1. So let's take a look at this in action. I want to find the equation of the normal to the curve at the point given. Well, the first task here is to get the equation of, or to get the, the gradient of the tangent to the curve. And in order to get the gradient of the tangent to the curve, we need the gradient function. In other words, we need dy by dx. So let's get the gradient function. So take the derivative, we get 2x and the derivative of negative 4 is 0. So the gradient function is 2x. And now what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate evaluate that, that function. So dy by dx, and we're going to evaluate that when x is 1. So what exactly is the gradient when x is 1? We substitute in, and we get a value of 2. So the gradient of the tangent gradient of the tangent to the curve at 1, negative 3 equals 2. Now, I've written down the point here, but in fact, it doesn't matter what, vi what y value we're given. It, the gradient of the tangent is actually decided by the value of x. Uh, y is dependent on x, so um, so really we're only concerned with the x value. But um, The gradient of the tangent at the point is 2, which means that the gradient, gradient of the normal the gradient of the normal at 1, 3 Remember, the normal is perpendicular to the tangent. So we're going to use the negative reciprocal. So you flip it and change the sign. So the gradient of the normal is negative 1, 2. And now what we're going to use is y minus. So let's get the equation of this normal now. The equation of the normal. Equation of normal. I'm just going to write capital M for it. The equation of the normal is going to be is going to be given by y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus, well, y1 is negative 3, so y plus 3 in this case, equals m, which is negative 1 half, times x minus x1, which is 1. Um, this time I'm going to write it in the form. Now, I haven't been told to write it in any particular form, but I'm going to write it in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0. So I'm going to write it in that form. Um, okay, in order to do that, I'm going to multiply everything by negative 2. I don't want to expand this out straight away, because then it's going to cause me problems a little bit later. So I'll just I'll get rid of this negative 1 half by multiplying everything by negative 2. So you get negative 2y subtract 6 equals x minus 1 and now let's gather everything to one side so we get x plus 2y um, adding 6 to both sides so plus 5 equals 0 and that is the equation of the normal to the curve at the point 1 negative 3 Right, another example. So I want to find the equation of the normal to the curve at the point given. 
Okay, so I'm going to do what we did in the previous examples earlier on where I've got the 6 over x, so I'm going to write it using a, a power. So I'm going to write as y equals x minus, and it's 6. I can bring this, that's x to the power of 1. So if I bring it above the line, I can write it as x to the power of negative 1, like so. And then we find dy dx. So let's get the gradient function first. Get the gradient function, and we get a, an answer of 1. The derivative of x is 1. Power comes down in front, so negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. And then reduce that power by 1, x to the power of negative 2. Okay, and we want to now evaluate evaluate dy dx. What is, to get the gradient, to get the gradient at this particular point, I evaluate the gradient when x is 3. So we evaluate dy by dx, I'm going to evaluate, that's what this straight line means, evaluate when x equals 3. And we get 1 plus 6, oops, 6 times 3 to the power of negative 2, which is 1 plus 6 over 3 squared. So bringing this below the line and squaring it equals 1 plus 6 over 9, which is going to be 2 thirds, 1 and 2 thirds. I'm going to write this as a fraction, um, which is 5 over 3. So the gradient of the tangent to the curve at this particular point is 5 over 3. So that's the gradient of the tangent to the curve, which means the gradient of the normal at the point 3, 1. So the gradient of the normal, remember it's perpendicular to the tangent, so I'm going to flip it and change the sign, negative 3 over 5, so it's a negative reciprocal from coordinate geometry. So now I've got the gradient of the normal, I've got the point, we're going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So let's get the equation of the normal. So that implies that y minus y1, y minus 1 equals m, which is negative 3 over 5, times x minus x1. I'm going to write this in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0 as well. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to multiply everything by negative 5. So we get negative 5y plus 5 equals 3 times x minus 3, which implies negative 5y plus 5 equals 3x minus 9. And let's take everything to the right hand side. So we get 3x plus 5y, and uh, subtracting 5 away from that 9 gives us negative 14, and that's equal to 0. And that's the equation of the normal to the curve at the point 3, 1. Okay, that's it for this video. Hopefully, you found it useful. I'll be back again soon with rates of change and the second derivative. All the best from me. Take it easy.